All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the session is being recorded, so it will be available later as well. Um, thanks for uh, coming today. Welcome to today's business performance webinar. My name is Kevin Velasquez, and I am a senior marketing manager with NAFA. If you didn't know, the Business Performance Center is one of NAFA's five centers of excellence, with the BPC focused on giving advisors the tools and resources they need to help build and grow their practice. So if you want to find more content like this webinar or other articles, webinars, and sessions, visit bpc.nafa.org. For today's webinar, we have a new Business Performance Center partner, AccuPoint Solutions, joining us. Gary Weber is the founder and CEO of AccuPoint, and I'll let him tell you a bit about who he is and what he does before he dives in. So if you do have any questions throughout today's presentation, feel free to ask them using the Q&A feature, and we'll leave some time at the end to answer them. So without further ado, Gary, I will turn the virtual floor over to you. All right, thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you, NAFA, for sponsoring this webinar. We really appreciate it. As Kevin said, I'm Gary Weber, founder and CEO of AccuPoint Solutions. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, a history of my experience. I've been in the financial services industry now for about 35 years. I have been an insurance agent, a registered rep, an investment advisor, sales manager, wholesaler for firms like Prudential and Dreyfus. Uh, I then spent some of my time on the operations side of the house, so I was the, um, ran the client services and the transfer agency for the Seligman Funds and was the chief operations officer for Morgan Stanley for their Van Camp and, and their advisor funds as well. I then went on and spent uh, over five years at Broadridge, where I assisted with building out a data strategy and uh, executing on that strategy by buying a host of companies to, um, that were in, you know, experts in that field. So I have supported, I have used, I have built these types of products in the past. Um, as far as AccuPoint Solutions go, you know, we have folks here that have 60 plus years of experience in mining the same data that we offer. Um, that data is information on two and a half million insurance professionals. So 2.2 million agents, a couple hundred thousand non-producers, 154,000 agencies, and then every active advisor and advisory firm. So BDs, RIAs, IAs, and, um, and registered reps. So uh, this webinar today is going to talk about understanding your data. We're going to pick on some individual data points, but it can apply to any data points. And then we're going to talk a little bit about data providers and perhaps you know how you maximize your providers as well, whether it's looking for providers or the current providers that you have. So what are we going to go through today? We're going to talk a little bit here about how you can look at better profiles of data, which then give you focus targets. And Quite frankly, it's all about increased sales, increased productivity, and increased value ultimately. So we see there are some data myths, and I'll go into these in detail, um, but there are some folks that, that don't think that understanding your data is critical, right? They talk about things like, if the agent or advisor tells me, it has to be true. Um, there's nothing I need to know about your data if I'm using a third-party platform. Uh, fill rates are most important. Data in my CRM is old. So if it's old, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And then with the provider, uh, there are folks that think trans transparency is not important and that industry experience is not important as well. So we're going to go through some of those. Let's talk a lot about why it's important to understand your data. So if you look at the data that's out there, and I'm looking at specific databases, these happen to be our databases, on the insurance side and then combined databases. So on the insurance side alone, if you look, as I mentioned, there's about 2.5 million insurance professionals. On them, there's about 30 million carrier appointments. There's almost 20 million licenses. Um, just presented in our front end are almost 5 million emails over 5 million phones and about 3.5 million addresses. And that's just what we have in the front end. We have a whole lot more behind the scenes. Now, when I combine those, so for agents that also happen to be investment advisors or registered reps, or even on the firm side, agencies that, and, and BDs and RIAs that are duly registered, you can add on these data points here. So you're talking about you know, upwards of 14, 1,500 total data points to get through, and all of those should be meaningful to you and can mean something to you and help you target. Um, and again, I broke this down by the agent agency side, the BDRR side, and the RIA IA side. So with all these data points, how do you get to the targets that you want to most get to? So let's talk about a few things. Um, let's talk about, again, some of these myths that we talk about, how we make you more productive. So when I look at 
from our perspective, we have, for example, a client that has over 200 marketers on the phone. They're making phone calls. And so if those marketers are not productive, right, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of energy, it's, a, it's just a waste altogether. So understanding those profiles, right, is incredibly, incredibly important. It's important for productivity. It's important for morale. And I put this down here because I thought it was important, this phrase, we are not saving lives, but are impacting livelihoods. Um, I had somebody in our office one time that did not get back to a client. And their comment to me was, well, you know, we're not saving lives. We're not doctors. And I had to have a whole conversation about, but we are impacting livelihoods. People have goals. People have objectives. People are getting paid on their productivity. So you've got to look at that from our standpoint. We say, you know, somebody calls, we've got to get back to them immediately because they probably have a question either on the tools they're using or on the data that they're using. If I look at direct mail, right, if you have direct mail, that adds up to real money. So when you're looking at using uh, data for direct mail, seems easy, right? I go to my provider, I get email address, or, I'm sorry, I get physical addresses. I just put those into and give them to my direct mail provider and off I go. Not as easy as you would think it would be, or it shouldn't be anyway. So for example, you should be looking at, if I'm looking at addresses, I should be looking at them from the standpoint of how can I make that data the best data I can possibly have at the opportune time before I need to send that direct mail out? Because again, it's very expensive to do that. A couple of things that you should be looking at when it comes to these data points. How many pieces of direct mail are you sending per address, right? So if you look at your data and maybe you look at it this deeply, there could be 10, there could be 100, there could be 1,000 pieces of emails or mail, I'm sorry, going into the same address. You should be looking at those addresses and saying, what is my optimum number? And what do I want to go to? How many do I want to go to? And that could differ between residential addresses and business addresses. So for example, we have clients who will call us up and say, well, I want to only go to five or 10 business addresses, um, the same people, the same address, because I know at that mail room, what's going to happen is uh, they're going to just throw pieces in the garbage if they see more than that. And at any home, let's go to three or four, because maybe there, there's a mom and a dad and some kids that are all in the same business. So you should be looking at those physical addresses and saying, what are the optimum numbers I should send? You should also be looking at if you have the latest data. So for example, there's a lot of data out there that is regularly updated and regularly standardized, and that's great. But if you're going to go out, will your provider standardize that for you right before you go out? It may only give you a bump up of maybe one or 2%, but that bump up, again, adds to real money, adds to productivity, and could get to some of those people that you truly want to recruit or market to or advertise to. So it is critically important, again, that you understand that data. You understand what you're looking at. That's just from the data point, but how it can help you and how you can maximize that data. Another thing that I look at when, when we talk about data and how critical it is, is what is management looking at and what do they understand? So again, I'm going to intertwine a lot of real life stories into this because I think it just is able to, to paint the picture of how important this is. Um, we have a client, we were very lucky to have them in that uh, we were getting calls that were saying, hey, listen, I'm calling out and I'm getting people that are telling me that they don't have X license or they're no longer in the business. And management, actually, we called them, talked to them a little bit. They went out and they looked at the scripts that their marketers were using. And basically, when they looked at the scripts, they realized that the script was written in a way that if somebody just said to them, I am not licensed to do that, or I'm retired, I'm no longer in the business, it's just a way to get them off the phone. So they changed their scripts to make sure that that opportunity wasn't there. So it is critical for management to understand the data as well and the data points and what those folks that are actually using the data are doing to become more efficient, to create those increased sales, productivity, and value. Another point with data and how critical it is, rerunning lists. So rerunning lists takes time and the profile of the list is critically important. So what you need to do is really talk about what is the criteria that you're using up front. 
And you, you really should look at what are those different pieces? Who do I want? Is it by age? Is it by license? Is it by carrier appointment? What are those different data fields and data points that you want and you want to combine together to get to those people that are targeted? You don't want to have your time wasted by going back and forth. And there's always a balancing act with that back and forth. And then get a list and either send some direct mail, do some emailing, uh, do some phone calling. And that list either isn't targeted properly or isn't refined. Many times what will happen is we'll get people that will uh, call us up and their list will go from, let's say, 20,000 people down to 15,000 people. And the question we always get is, does that make sense? Is that right? And the answer we always give back is, let's look at the criteria. If that criteria is right, then these are your targets. You don't want to waste your time or money going to 5,000 people that are not your right targets. So you've got to take a lot of time in, in the upfront profiling, in the upfront understanding who it is that you want to target and why. Um, create that better profile. Can you create it by looking at, in this case, just agent data? Or should you combine it with other data that you may have, whether it's from a provider or data you may have sitting in your database as well? And, you know, we do a lot of that with our clients whereby they will say to us, well, I have X from this provider or I have Y from this, this vendor or from this partner that we have. And combining that data a lot of times gives you the better picture of what that person might be and that better profile of what they might be selling to help you out. This is where kind of the consultative approach comes in from your teams and from your providers is looking at all of this data, looking at the profile, understanding then, do you have the best profile that's out there? Some of the myths, and I'm gonna go through them and it you know, is right here. If the agent tells me it must be true, Again, I drive home this example all the time because we spend a lot of time talking to individuals on the phone where they'll say, well, I know this individual. I know they have uh, these three carrier appointments as an example. Why don't we have them? And we take the time to go through and explain to them why it is that we don't have them. And understanding that data is critical. And again, I'm gonna to touch on that a little more detail in a minute. Um, the use, user must experience the data. Right. Ask key questions of the prospects and ask the provider key questions. Right. So you need to rely on your provider of the data, whether, again, that's internal people or external people to have them experience what they are doing, who they are calling, who they are targeting, who they are looking for. Because understanding that data inside and out, again, creates that efficiency, increased sales, increased productivity. One of the ways you can do that is either relying on your internal folks or re relying on your external provider, right? The more your provider knows about the data, the more they can help you understand. So, you know, an example I use here, and I'll stick with the agent side of it, is if you're looking at your data and you're targeting folks that are, let's say, selling indexed universal life, fine, you go in, you make sure that you have a lifeline of authority so you know they can sell that. But what is the next thing you can drill down to? The next thing you can drill down to is what are their carrier appointments? If I'm with Allianz, for an example, I'm probably more likely to sell Index Universal Life than property and casualty if I also happen to have a property and casualty license. So that experience of the data, what works? Are you looking for a little bit of an older profile, a little bit of a younger profile? But how do you tie together all of those data points to make sure you're getting the best profile you can is critically important. Uh, another step in understanding your data, you know, we talked about some of these myths. There's nothing I need to know if using the data with another third party platform. Um, again, what we've experienced are clients that are going out, they take our data and they use it in a different type of platform, whether that's with direct mail, whether that's another email platform with a dialer, right? A dialing company. Um, you need to understand what's happening on the other end of that in order to get the most productivity and the most value out of your, out of your data. So in other words, why are you getting those soft bounces from an email campaign using a third party provider? What is it about soft bounces versus non-deliverables or hard bounces that you need to know, right? What is it about your subject line and your content that could create all of those things? 
So again, you need to rely on your providers and that could be either your data provider or that could be your provider that's doing the actual service to understand and deeply understand what that data means. So now we're taking it to a next level. We're not talking just about the data that you are using. We're talking about the data that's coming out of the results. So again, I, I use another example that we have. Uh, we had a client who was getting a lot of non-deliverables. So non-deliverables reflects on us, right? So I've got all these non-deliverables. Uh, why are these data, why is this data aged? So we took the time and we went through with the client and we looked at their report from a different vendor, somebody that uh, you know we have nothing to do with. And it took us about two weeks. And by the time we whittled it down, it ended up that this particular client had taken data number one from an old system, from their, old, from their CRM, some data was more than a year old. So that comes into play, age data. Number two, they had pulled another list three months prior. Again, adds a little bit, age data. Number three, the provider that they were using, whenever somebody soft bounces, and a soft bounce is when the, there's something else triggering that email not getting through. A soft bounce is when your subject line has words in it that flag somebody on the other end that you might be spam. A soft bounce is when you have coding in your HTML that makes it look like spam, all right? Those are soft bounces. The hard bounces are those bounces that are truly non-deliverable, aged, you would think. In this case, however, our client was using another third-party, very uh, you know, well-used third-party email distri distribution platform. And in this case, on the seventh bounce, these individuals will, or this firm, will move that to a non-deliverable, and they should. That's good for you. Again, you've got to know what your providers are doing and what's happening. That is very good for you because, number one, you don't want to pay for that. And number two, those are only going to create issues. They're only going to create more soft bounces, less emails getting through, more inefficiency. So by the time we netted it all out, it ends up that what was a 10% non-deliverable, hard non-deliverable rate, which looks like bad emails, whittled down to about a 3% non-deliverable rate, which is much lower than the industry average. So, you know, again, an example of knowing your data, knowing your platforms, relying on your providers or your internal resources to go through that and understanding that before you send it out would have saved this particular client a lot of time. So you just have to understand that. Um, data in my CRM is bad. I come across people like this all the time. I have old data or I have data. I don't need any additional data because I've been doing this for 30 years and I don't need data. Um, doesn't have to be that way. It's great if you have individuals in your CRM. Usually it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of that data is probably aged, right? You should be making sure that you're updating that data. So when you're doing campaigns, you're not wasting your time. There's lots of providers out there that will combine that data for you will give you the latest data, set you up in a system where you can be on a maintenance plan for your CRM. So how do you get a better understanding of your data, right? Those are all examples of things that can happen, things and why data is critical and why you have to, you know, why you need to understand it. But how do you get a better understanding? Um, it starts with having above average and complete data. And some of the things where, where sometimes people um, think about it is they say, well, complete. I want to make sure that every single individual has an email address, a phone number, a carrier appointment, their licenses. And you really need to define complete. Complete is not always more. Um, you, and, and, you know, it depends on the fill rates and what particular data point you're looking at. Complete if you're looking at, for example, the universe of the advisor or the insurance world, means do you have everyone? And for the most part, you should have everyone. Um, that's complete. But a lot of times what we see is people will look at it and say, well, I understand that uh, you know, the fill rate here from this provider is 90% versus the fill rate for this provider is 80%. The fill rates need to be explained to you and they should be explained to you. There's a lot of times when maybe 80% is the better number, maybe 60% is a better number, maybe 100% is the better number. But what is it that's going on with that data point that you don't have? It could be indicative that maybe that you don't have those data points because they're more service people as opposed to producers and you don't want them. 
So the more you ask for them, the more you may end up getting, uh, you know, folks that you don't want to go to. It may be that there are some sources that just don't provide that data. And again, these are things that the more you understand, the more your teams understand, the better off you are. Um, for example, there are states that do not provide carrier appointments. There are some sources that don't provide email addresses or phone numbers. So a lot of times you should question that if that's not provided at value added sources and trusted sources, where is that data coming from? Is that data coming from a source that maybe is not as quality driven or quality oriented as you would want it to be just to get those fill rates up? So understanding that data and understanding the importance of it and what those fill rates should be is very important because getting numbers up just to get numbers up is just going to waste your time and your money. Um, what is quality? So let's talk about that a little bit. So I see a lot of things turn around from a marketing perspective sometimes. And you know, a lot of times what, what you should do is press and is this true? So I've seen this over the years, many, many places. Um, we have the best data around. We review 100% of our emails every three months, every six months, every nine months. You really need to get into what does that mean? What percentage is it? How many are you actually reviewing if you want to make sure you're getting good data and value-added data? Um, I can tell you from our experience, saying that you validated every email or every phone number every six months is virtually impossible. Now, the things you can do to try to do that, there is a segment that you can do that with, but trying to do it and saying that you're doing it is virtually impossible, uh, even through technology. And we leverage a lot of technology and a lot of manual intervention, but you have to understand, and, you know, what is happening here with my data? Is that true? What does validation mean? So a lot of times what I hear from folks is, um, well, I'm told that emails, the emails are validated. So something about emails, and I, I'm touching on this because I know emails and phones are very important to folks. You, nobody can tell you if there's a handshake with an email. Meaning nobody can tell you that um, we absolutely can confirm that that, that, that email is, is good in mass. You can do it through th certain ways, right? If the email gets to a person, you're doing email campaigns and it gets there. And, and we use a lot of our data through our email campaigns to do that. But nobody can tell you that it's absolutely true through a validation process. They can tell you there's absolutely no good. And that's, that's the good part. But when you're looking at emails in particular, but you have to say to yourself, what does that validation mean? Usually validation means we can tell you if there's spam traps and honeypots, right? Bad things that can make you have uh, additional soft bounce rates than what you may want. We can tell you if somebody is a constant unsubscriber, right? So what's happening? They're always hitting unsubscribe. You don't want to send to them. But don't think that just because somebody's saying that the emails are validated, that that means that all those emails are good. That should be explained to you and, and to have a good understanding of what that means. So your expectations in using them and going out uh, in a mass campaign are set. Um, I've heard things, again, over the years, we have uh, you know a 2% bounce rate. We have a 1% bounce rate when we're doing mass email campaigns. <clears throat> again, what does that mean? Is that a soft bounce rate or is that a hard bounce rate? And, and usually what happens there is you can say you have that, but what that generally means is we've already whittled down and removed from 100,000 emails, those emails that are known to constantly unsubscribe, those emails that are honeypots and spam traps. And you've whittled it down. And basically what we're talking about now is an, an opt-in list versus a non-opt-in list. And again, it's critical to understand those differences and those definitions. One is a list that you know. You're going to get lower soft bounce rates. You are going to get lower non-deliverables and unsubscribes. A non-opt-in list is a list they don't know you. You're going to naturally get more unsubscribes, more soft bounces, just the way everything behind the system is set up. So again, it's understanding the data so you understand what the results are. And those expectations should be set up front so that you're clear in what is going to happen when I send out 100,000 emails? Am I really going to get that? And why is that important? Well, it's important because of your conversion rates. If 
you have a conversion rate set and that's set on 100,000 emails. And by the time you send them out, it whittles down to about 70,000 or 50,000 or whatever the number is. Um, you're not going to make your numbers right away. And you're going to be scrambling then to get everything in order to make sure that you get to actually 100,000 folks. So again, I'm just back to understanding the data is just critical. Understanding the results is critical. Understanding what goes into it and profiling is critical. When it comes to your data, I always say training, training, and more training. And this is where we see um, some of the biggest issues is when people are using data that have not been properly trained on it. And one of the things that we do is we tell all of our clients, even if people are not actually pulling data from our system, you really need to train them and we will train them for you and get them all on the phone. Doesn't matter how many there are because they need to understand the expectations. They need to understand how to use the data. Why am I using a primary email over a secondary? And what should my expectations be? Why am I using a primary over a secondary phone number or a personal phone number? What is happening? And this is where then, you know, as far as you're running a team, if all of a sudden they just get, uh, you know, a bad taste in their mouth about the data, it's just going to be an uphill battle from there. So for those, and especially those that haven't been trained and aren't pulling the data, you have to make sure that they're trained. You have to make sure they understand what's going on with the data, set the expectations, how to use the data. Um, part of that training should be in leveraging critical data points. So, you know, many times I'll hear from folks, okay, well, I want to find X. Um, do you have production data? No, no production data. Nobody out there really has production data except at the sources, right? And it's not really combined. So how can you better tell if somebody is actually selling the type of product that you want? How can you tell that person actually fits your profile? They're not selling index funds. So there's all these things that go on and all these things that happen. And you look at it and you say, well, one of the ways is leveraging different data points. So if you don't understand what those data points can be, then you're not going to leverage them to get to where you need to be. So an example that I use is, you know, somebody called us up one day and said, well, I'm really looking for RIA firms that are focused on alternative funds. So we dug into it. There is a particular question um, that's out there at one of our sources where it basically says you're looking at this type of product. We work with the client, said, hey, we think this works. Does it work? What do you think? Yes, it does. Well, now we have a data point that says, hey, is the RIA firm more likely selling alternative funds or not? We can put that in and now append that data for the client and send it on out. It just makes it, again, more valuable to you. Um, Providing flexibility in your data is critical as well. There's, there's no one size fits all approach, right? Again, it's the 80-20 rule. So if you have certain data and you wanna customize it, you should be able to customize it. Um, example I use here is an independent save search, right? We have people that we talk to that would define captive agencies, right? Or institutional advisory firms one way where others won't. So we will look at those different data points and develop uh, a series of searches for these individuals so they could just click a button and download what they define as independent searches, what they define as institutional or retail type firms. And we think that's critical in using your data because again, once you understand it, that's great. But now what is the ease of use? You really need to be able to go out and use that easily. So how do you get to that? And if it's a, a one size fits all approach, it's not always gonna work. And then industry experience. I've touched on this a little, I'll touch on it again. Um, the experience of your individual marketers, your individual marketing folks, the providers that you're using, again, whether that's an email house, whether that's a um, direct mail house, whether it's your data provider is crucial because they need to understand how you're using the data, what the results are. And, and they need to understand that in order to understand what they need to do then to pivot, to make sure that that data is best for you, to make sure you're getting better results and not wasting your time and effort. Ongoing support is an absolute must, okay? We believe this wholeheartedly. Um, you need to have that ongoing support from the people that understand the data the most to get you up to speed and your users up to speed um, on what that data means 
in order for you to get the most value. And it's a two-way street, right? Many of our clients know more than we do about the actual ins and outs of the data points and what they mean. So many times we'll go to them and say, well, here, we did the research. Will these three data points get you to where you need to be? Their answer is yes or no. And then we go from there. And then that provides additional value down the road. So it's not just of the individual providing you with the data. It's of the individuals where you are. And then, again, creating that upstream so that uh, everybody who's working on that data clearly understands what it is. Transparency. I can't say enough about transparency. Um, it just creates trust. It creates confidence. It creates better management. Um, you should feel comfortable in the data points that you're using, especially when you feel that those data points are not correct, in getting an answer for why they are not correct. Right. So if all of a sudden you're looking and you know that somebody has A, B, and C, why does the data not have A, B, and C? What is it? Was it just missed? Um, are the processes that are in place, are they just not doing the right job? Is the data not being kept up with? Or is there a, a solid reason why they don't have it? Because the expectation is when you're dealing with data, whether you're getting it from a broker dealer, whether you're getting it from a carrier, whether you're getting it from a third party provider, it's never going to be 100% perfect. The key is getting that error rate down to the lowest that it possibly can be. And getting you, know, you comfortable and anybody comfortable with the data and why it is where it is and what those quality rates are, we think is key and very, very important to users being comfortable with what they're doing. And ultimately, again, you know, I, I say this all the time, our goal is always to get our users to know our tool and our data better than we do because it just provides more value. Sorry about that. So now let's talk about industry experience of the provider itself. And I've gone through some of this, so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly here. Um, any provider, and again, this, this goes to any partner that you might have, any vendor that you might have, they should be adamant about wanting to help you. And they should follow through on wanting to help you. They should follow through on any question that you have. They should follow through on training. They should follow through to see how you're doing, even if they haven't heard from you. These are all things that help. Um, you know, again, I, I, we have folks that every once in a while we call up um, and, you know, if you don't call them, what happens is they'll tell you, well, you know, I put it to the side because I found when I did a search and I was looking for data, I got a lot of X in there. I got a lot of state farm folks in there. Uh, I got a lot of institutional RIAs in there. I got broker dealers I didn't want. Well, why? Right. You know, it's always what the saying garbage in, garbage out. It's usually one or two best practices then that will help and help get them more efficient. But without that conversation, you don't know. So getting into understanding that data and making that data critical for you is that conversation, is that back and forth, is that relationship. Um, you know, again, they should be constantly asking you what the data is that you want as well. So, so if you're understanding the data and if you wanna to get to that better profile and you wanna become more efficient, one of the things is understanding, do you have all the data you need? If you don't, can it be accessed? Can it be accessed internally through other systems, through other means, or can it be accessed through your current provider? Are they willing to go out and try to get that for you? Things to consider of any data provider, and, and I think these are important. Um, number one, you, there's a cultural line, right? That's why I have this up here. If your culture does not align, oh, sorry about that. If your culture doesn't align, it's going to be a problem. You're not gonna get the answers that you want. You're not gonna get the answers you seek. You're not gonna get the help with the data points that you need to understand. So your cultures need to align. Um, you wanna read between the lines. What are the metrics that they're giving you and are they important to you? Do you care if the person's handicap is a five? Is that important to you? Is it not important to you? Is that being marketed? Because if that's being marketed, then maybe the other data points are not as good as, as uh, you want them to be. They should seek to understand before being understood. I'm sure all of you have experienced this. Um, you get somebody who calls you up and they just start into a demo or their product pitch right away. 
they don't understand what it is that you need, what you're looking for. Um, there's been quite a few folks that we've talked to that we've just said, we don't think we can add value to what you're doing. We don't think we can help you out at all. Um, I put this quote in here because it, I just got it yesterday and it really struck me. We have a provider, it's not a data provider, um, but we have a provider that basically every once in a while you get a stream of emails. We want to talk to you. We want to see how we can add more value. So basically we got on the phone with this provider and um, we said, there are three things that we need. No problem. We'll take care of it. The person on the other end said, but you also need this, I think. And we agreed. Next thing I know, we're getting DocuSign emails all over the place. Uh, we're, getting e we're getting other emails from the sales rep. We're getting phone calls. Um, and then the last email I got is this. I know it doesn't mean a lot to you, but I need this to get to my weekly number that I've already committed my, to my leadership. Please excuse my professional persistence. This is somebody that didn't ask anything of us. Didn't ask us you know, what we needed, what we wanted. And by the way, it's not followed up at all with the things that we wanted that were important. So those are things to consider of, of, of any provider. Um, do they take the extra step and not just answer your questions, right? They should be more than willing to do whatever it is that you need to get comfortable without you know, giving up the secret sauce all the time. So you know, if you want samples of data, you should get samples of data. One of the things I'd be careful here, every now and then we'll get people that will say to us, well, we want to test your data by doing emails. So make sure that how you're testing it makes sense. You can do an email campaign. You can do a mass campaign. The issue with that is it's, it will show you some things about the data, but it's not going to show you everything. Soft bounces are not indicative of the data quality. Hard bounces are, right? And there's a lot of reasons for soft bounces that are mainly outside of the quality of the data. So understanding that um, will be very important. And then price point, is it reflective of the value provided? That is something that you should always look at. It doesn't always have to be the cheapest or less expensive, um, but it doesn't always have to be the most expensive either. So, you know, that was uh, um, uh, an approach that we like to take to understanding data, to understanding how critical data it is. You know, we can get into uh, very, very different data points, drill down to hundreds of different, different data points for you. Um, but hopefully those were the ones that exemplified what you need to know, what questions you need to ask, how you can provide better value. Um, and hopefully that was very helpful today. So thank you for joining. Uh, thank you, NAFA, for all you do for our industry as well. And uh, Kevin, I'll throw it back to you and see if we have any questions. All right. Thanks so much, Gary. We do not have any questions right now. We just have a good thanks from, from Bob, thanking you for partnering with us. So I would also like to thank you and thanks for your time and insights today. This webinar is being recorded, so we will definitely send out um, a link to view it on demand to all attendees and registrants. Um, and if you have any cool lingering questions, anything that pops up after the fact, you can always reach out to us at bpc at nafa.org and we'll get back to you. So if there's nothing else, then um, we'll let everyone get out of here a little bit early. And uh, thanks so much for your time. That concludes this webinar. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.